Hey everyone, what's going on? It's been what seems like forever since I've made a video, so who knows if I'll continue to make videos. Just felt like making a random video today because I had a little bit of time and, you know, that's a lot of reason why I haven't been making any videos. It's, it's really hard when you have kids to sit here and make four hour videos and then try to edit them and everything else on, you know, on top of everything else. And I also kept getting strikes for all of my videos about the umbrella symbolism. And I've just never had so many strikes in my life on YouTube ever since making these umbrella videos where I'm talking about the truth community being created on purpose for an agenda. And even the Gematria community is included in this and we don't have our own thoughts and we can be manipulated and mind controlled to have certain beliefs and so on. Every time I make one of them videos, almost every single time I get a strike and the video gets taken down. There's a few of them that are still up because I had appealed them and somehow they got to stay on there. But I guess as long as I don't talk about the umbrella symbolism, then I should be able to make videos. Hopefully they don't take this video down, you know, five minutes into uploading the video. But the reason I'm making this video is just because recently I've had a whole lot of luck, a lot of good luck with gambling and money. And I don't know if you remember last year in, it was December of 2022, I was talking about a money theme and how I've just had like the worst streak of luck with money in my life. Like a student loan from 20 years before garnished my bank account. Then they started garnishing 25% of my paychecks, which oddly enough, my paychecks came out to be $666 every two weeks which was pretty crazy in, re in relation to money and Solomon and 666. But uh, my girlfriend also lost her job. And then I maxed out all my credit cards, like 20 some thousand dollars. It was crazy. Like just tons of things with money that were terrible for me last year. And I kept having a bunch of synchronicities in 2023 that were showing me that I was connected to Super Bowl 58 and such as how like YouTube, uh, they took down one of my videos from November 3rd, I think it was. And they took that video down five years and eight days after I put the video on YouTube, 58. And the video had to do with Kevin Spacey, whose name equals 58, and his sexual assault that equals 58, and his sexual assault was on this guy named Anthony Rapp, who equals 58. And I pointed out how my name equaled 58. And... Kevin Spacey was fired from House of Cards on the day leaving 58 days in the year. And, you know, think about House of Cards and Las Vegas where Super Bowl 58 was going to be held. And then in 2023 in May, YouTube took down another video that I had about Kevin Spacey. And they did it 58 days before Kevin Spacey's birthday. And this was interesting because a lot of the stuff I have, like a lot of the blog posts and stuff I have with Kevin Spacey, they were all connected to San Francisco. So I really thought, you know, it's following San Francisco or the Eagles to be in the Super Bowl. It was mostly the 49ers for most of the year. Then at the very end of the year, I started thinking that maybe it was from the Eagles because of this bridge earthquake symbolism that I followed. But San Francisco and Philadelphia have always had this relationship in the patterns that I'm following. But regardless, I don't even care about that. But... You know, it's interesting the 49ers did go on to make Super Bowl 58. And another reason that I thought it was connected was because we had these stories with Jason Aldean and Tupac that were in the news on the same day. And these stories were all about the number 58. Tons of stuff with the number 58. Tupac even died 58 days before my birthday way back in the 90s. And... The reason that stuck out was because Tupac is the reason that I ever got into like this number knowledge, right? I knew there was something important to numbers with the death of Tupac because of high school and my friend giving the speech about Tupac dying all by the number seven. And, you know, then we had 9-11 and we had all kinds of stuff that were synced up to numbers. So I knew there was something important to numbers and Tupac was pretty much, you know, one of the very beginning things and the reasons why I'm even making these videos right now. But... You know, I saw Tupac died 58 days before my birthday, and I started thinking about the number seven in relation to gambling 
and money, right? The number seven at casinos, the number seven in craps, and so on, right? And these two guys were both, you know, Tupac was shot and killed in Las Vegas, supposedly. And Jason Aldean was the guy who was playing at the Las Vegas attack. And this led me to think that Bob Barker might possibly die because in 2017, before the Las Vegas attack, there was this big thing with the guy who got the perfect showcase, Terry Nice, on The Price is Right. He reached out to me the day before the Las Vegas attack, and that guy was from Las Vegas, and he was wearing a Las Vegas shirt when he was on The Price is Right. Then we had the Las Vegas attack the very next day. So I thought Bob Barker would possibly die. I blogged about it. Then Bob Barker died the next week on the anniversary of the Bridgewater shooting that's connected to Philadelphia and San Francisco. And of course, this narrative was also related to Carl Weathers, who is Chubbs in the movie Happy Gilmore that Bob Barker is also in. That's all about the number nine. Happy Gilmore learns how to, or try to think, oh, Shooter McGavin tells him to meet him at the ninth green at nine and Adam Sandler was born on nine, nine and California was founded on nine, nine. And you know, there, there, there was a ton of stuff with the number 99 and Bob Barker just so happened to die at the age of 99. The 99th prime number is 523. Drew Carey's birthday is May 23rd, 523. The new host of the price is right. All kinds of stuff, but it was connected to Carl Weathers and then Carl Weathers ends up dying just before the Super Bowl. Of course, Carl Weathers went to college in San Francisco. He was connected to the Super Bowl. Carl Weathers was also known as Apollo Creed, right? Apollo Creed in the Rocky films. And for years, I've been talking about him and how he is connected to this earthquake symbolism that I've talked about with Philadelphia because the worst ever recorded East Coast earthquake was on August 31st, I think 1886 in Charleston, which was exactly 99 years after the character Apollo Creed had died. Or the, Apollo Creed died exactly 99 years later in none other than Las Vegas, this character. And think about Rocky and Rocky in Philadelphia. And I guess the reason I'm bringing all this up is because I want you to, to see that Apollo Creed's birthday or death day was August 31st. That is the biggest thing I want you to understand here. There is something going on with how it's connected. What I'm going to be talking about here in a second is connected to Michael Jordan, the basketball player. And in these new Rocky movies, the Adonis Creed is played by the, the actor Michael B. Jordan. So there's definitely, somehow it is related to what the main thing that I'm going to be talking about in this video. And that is how... I've had a ton of recent luck and I've won $10,000 two times gambling since this year. The first time was on February 12th at like 2.30 in the morning. So the Super Bowl was on February 11th. I watched that and I came home and then I got on Chumba, which is an online casino or sweepstakes place that pays out real money. But I won $10,000 the night after the Super Bowl, you know, just hours after the Super Bowl, really that the Niners were in. And I really thought the Niners were going to win because I had a bunch of synchronicity with the number nine in relation to this. So let me explain this a little bit. So on the night of February 3rd, I went to bed probably about 1045, which is really odd for me because I'm usually up well until like two in the morning or so, but I was really tired that night or something. And I went to bed before midnight. It was February 3rd into February 4th. And I had this dream that I was playing this specific slot machine called Hypernova on Chumba. And in my dream, I just so happened to win a huge jackpot by getting all number nines. The whole screen filled up with number nines, and I won this huge jackpot. And I woke up the next day, and I thought, oh, man, you know, I didn't think too much of it. I was like, that's pretty interesting. But I thought maybe it's because I've been thinking about this gamble and stuff. And we had the Niners that were in the, going to be in the Super Bowl. And, you know, I was thinking about the number nine maybe because of that. But I have this dream with all, where I win all, by getting all number nines, I win this huge jackpot in this dream. And it's even funnier is 2 3, 23 is the ninth prime number. But. I ended up, you know, the, the 49ers ended up losing in the Super Bowl, and I, I lost like 100 bucks, and I was like, well, what the hell? I thought the Niners were supposed to win this, you know? 
And I came home and I decided to play this Hypernova and it was probably about 2.30 in the morning, I hit a $10,000 jackpot. And then I noticed that it was nine days after having that dream. So I have a dream where I hit a jackpot getting all number nines on a, this specific slot machine. And then nine days later, I didn't get all number nines, but I hit the most money I've ever won ever, hands down. You know, the, I, I've been gambling for years, like, you know, it's small amounts, but I, I, probably the most I've ever won is maybe like two grand. You know, I've, I've never won any, I've never won $10,000 ever. That, that's a crap load of money to me. You know what I mean? So it's just unbelievable. Nine days after having a dream with all number nines, I hit a jackpot. But this stuff with number nine gets even more interesting because a few days before all of this, we had the death of Toby Keith. And when I was looking, I went back and I looked at, so I have like four blog posts about Toby Keith over the years. And I've been blogging forever and so on. And the very first, almost every one of them had to do with a dream theme that I blogged about, right? With Toby Keith. And the very first one that I have was talking about the number nine, nine days ago, and a dream. And basically what I talked about in that that post from March 17th of 2018 was, in 2018, I was following a big bridge theme with earthquakes and so on. And it had to do with money as well. And it was connected to the Super Bowl that the Philadelphia Eagles had won after there was that 4.1 earthquake that was felt near Philadelphia in November that year or maybe it was December 1st. Remember there was a 4.1 earthquake that year and then the Eagles went on to win the Super Bowl with 41 points and the word Super Bowl equals 41, which is another reason why I thought I was connected this year because I had just turned 41 years old before Super Bowl 58 and my name equaled 58. But back then I was following this big bridge collapse theme and it had a lot to do with the Super Bowl being held in Minneapolis, where Minneapolis is famous for that bridge collapse that happened on the day August 1st, like 81, and it fell 81 feet, and the main trusses were 81 meters long, and the, the story told us that it took the medical people 81 minutes to transport everyone to the hospital, and there was a whole bunch of other stuff how it's connected to Pope Francis, who the word pontiff actually means bridge builder, and Pope Francis turned 81 years old that year. But that Super Bowl was also held at U.S. US Bank Stadium, right? So there was this theme with money. And then a month after the Super Bowl, on the Ides of March, we got the FIU bridge collapse. There was a bridge collapse at the FIU college campus. And that was like one of the headline stories in the news. And that just so happened to be on the 44th mayor of San Francisco's 44th birthday. And he became the mayor four months and four days before the anniversary of the Golden Gate Bridge. And in this language of Gematria, if you write out Golden Gate Bridge, it also equals 81. I know there's a whole bunch of them up here. I don't usually use all these ciphers, but in the Pythagorean Gematria, it's 81. And also in the reverse Pythagorean Golden Gate Bridge equals 81. So I knew there was this big theme going on with bridges and how it was connected to the Super Bowl stuff that year with Philadelphia. But, you know, the 44th mayor of San Francisco, it was his 44th birthday. He became the mayor four months and four days before the Golden Gate Bridge anniversary. The word earthquake, if you write it out, earthquake, just so happens to equal 44 as well. So, you know, all that just stood out to me. But I was on Facebook after that bridge collapse happened and enter the stars for whatever reason, his like thing came up on my feed and he had a video about this FIU bridge collapse and how he had a dream about it nine days before it happened. So I was like, wow, that's crazy. And I went and I checked out his video and in his video, he was talking about how he dreamt that this building collapsed and somehow he was connecting it to this FIU bridge collapse. But then he went on to say that the only time that he ever had a prophetic dream was one where he dreamt that his dad was going to die, and then his dad died a month later. And that stood out to me because the same day that he had this dream about the building collapse, I it was on 3-6 of 2018, I had a dream, and in my dream, my dad died in that dream. And I didn't blog about it or anything because I didn't want to put any bad, like, you know, 
karma or juju, whatever you want to call it, on my dad. But, you know, what are the odds that, you know, nine days before was something very important, right? Nine days. And then I win $10,000 nine days after I have a dream connected to this, you know. So Toby Keith dies in the mix of this, and it's connected to nine days in a dream. And then I win a bunch of money nine days after having a dream about the number nine. And even more interesting is that uh, in the mix of all this, I never blogged about it. I never told anybody about that dream with the number nine. And then on the same day that Toby Keith died, Zenith of the Alpha sent me a message telling me how he just put out this video about Princess Diana and the number nine. And, you know, he also went on to talk about Carl Weathers. But a big thing that he talked about in this or this video was the movie The Nines with Ryan Reynolds, right? So the movie The Nines, he's talking about Princess Diana. And it's interesting because Princess Diana actually died on August 31st, which is the same day that Apollo Creed died, remember? And remember, pa Apollo Creed was connected to the number 99. Right? Not one nine, but two nines. And that's also the same day that my son Alistair was born. If you go back to 2019, my son Alistair, who was born super in connection to Alistair Crowley, such as he died, or he, he was born 72 days before my birthday and 93 days before the 72nd anniversary of Alistair Crowley dying at the age of 72. And think about the, you know, the 72 demons in the Goetia. And my other son was born all by the number 72 as well, which is interesting. But we named my son Alistair partially because of Alistair Crowley in that weird way because I had a blog post about him. And then my girlfriend decided to ask me if I wanted to name him that. And I thought, that, well, it's so weird that you would ask me that after I make a blog post about that. So we ended up naming him Alistair. But, you know, 93 is the, the number important in Thelema and so on. So 93 days before the 72nd anniversary of Alistair Crowley dying age 72. And he was also born 72 days before my birthday. But if you go back to that year, 2019, I was following the date August 31st because of France and NASCAR. And I thought that there was a racer that would possibly die. And think about how Princess Diana died in a car crash in France and Anyway, on that day, the French racer Antoine Hubert ended up dying, and he died super connected to exactly what I was talking about. He even had Dale Earnhardt, who was on a Dale Earnhardt Jr. was in a plane crash just a couple weeks before that, and he survived. But that was on Napoleon's birthday in history, so there was definitely a bunch of stuff going on with France and NASCAR, and there's more to it, you know. Number nine, Chase Elliott. I, I thought maybe he might win the Daytona 500. Instead, his teammate ended up winning, connected to Kobe Bryant and Jeff Gordon. And it, it was all about the number nine, though, still. But maybe I'll talk about that later. But the reason that I'm bringing all of this up is the fact that a few days later, let's see if I put it in here. I think it's in a different blog post. Let me find it really quick. A few days later, on February 9th of all days, the 9th of February, I it was a Friday, so I don't have to work, and I take my son Alistair to preschool about 11.30, so I dropped my son Alistair off at preschool, and then I came home, and I was going to watch this movie, The Nines, with Ryan Reynolds, because Zenith had messaged me, and then I saw Toby Keith die, and I saw the connection to number nine in Dreams, and by the way, this movie also came out on August 31st, so, but which is my son's birthday and Princess Diana's death day. But I sat down in my chair to watch this movie and I look over and there is a flashcard on the floor. It's an upside down number six. So I'm getting ready to watch the movie called The Nines and I look over and there's a flashcard sitting there. It's the only flashcard. There's only two flashcards there and I don't know where the other ones went. My, my son's preschool teacher gave us these flashcards like A through Z and I think one through 10. And I would work on him at night with him, you know, to try to help him learn his letters and numbers. And uh, I don't know where they went. I still can't find them. There's only two left. And this one is upside, or it's flipped upside down. It's a number four, which I'll get to. But moral of the story, 
I go to watch the nines. I sit down, I look over, and I see a number nine sitting next to me, which is an upside down six. And then before I even watched the movie, I looked at all the, the characters and whatnot. And the film's 99 minutes long. Ryan Reynolds, born on the 23rd, so ninth prime is 23. Hope Davis, another main actor, born on the 23rd. Her name equals 99. L. Fanning, or L.E., however you say it, born on the 9th of April, which is the 99th day of the year. Her name equals 99. And the other big star in the movie was Melissa McCarthy, who was born on August 26th, the same day that Bob Barker died. The number connected to the number 99, or the date connected to 99, with the Bridgewater shooting, right? I'm just like, this movie is super connected. It's crazy that Zenith would reach out to me, had no idea about in, any of the stuff with the, my dream and the number nine. So anyway, I start watching this movie. And if you don't want to listen to this part, it, I mean, you're not going to understand the rest of the video probably. But if you want to, pause the video right here and go watch the movie so it doesn't spoil it. But, you know, or give it a few minutes and then come back in the video. But... Basically, if you watch this movie, Ryan Reynolds, you find out Ryan Reynolds is kind of like an angel. He's a number nine. And basically, he there's like different incarnations that he takes. He he created kind of like the, he, he created these realities on earth, basically. And then he goes and lives inside of them. And he did it so much that he kind of forgot that he was an angel. And he thought he was, you know, part of his creation basically so these other angels in the movie they start showing him the number nine and giving him number nine synchronicities all over to help him try to remember that he is a number nine and you know like like god is 10 and he's a number nine kind of like an angel right and in his very last incarnation his name just so happens to be gabriel and if you followed my channel for years i've talked about the angel gabriel and Back in 2021, I was following a big theme with dreams, and I talked about how the angel Gabriel comes to people in their dreams. He even helps Daniel in the Bible with his visions and dreams, right? Oddly enough, my name is Daniel. And, you know, I, I didn't, you wouldn't think much of this except for the fact that I had that synchronicity with the number nine flashcard here, which is an upside down number six, actually. So when the movie was over, I I was looking at these flashcards and I flipped over the one that was upside down or it wasn't showing and I realized it was the number four and this instantly stood out to me because that means the two flashcards that are sitting next to me were the number six and the number four. And if you go back to the year 2022, I actually blogged about how I had a dream where the angel Gabriel showed me the numbers six and the number four in my dream. I blogged about it on March 17th, I believe it was. Yeah, I blogged about it March 17th, which oddly enough is the same day that I blogged about the Toby Keith dream and the number nine in 2018. So four years later, on the very same day, I, I blogged about a dream I had with the angel Gabriel showing me the numbers six and four. And I can't remember the full dream. I wrote it in here, but it was something to do with I was at like Walmart and somehow it turned into like Mario Kart. And then I was going down this giant hill and there was a, a big person or some being behind me. And then I ended up going like all the way to the corner as I was flying down this hill. And I went in this like black hole and I got inside there and it was a dark room with like a, a light, a hole in the floor with a light shining. And there was like a book that was wrapped in something. And I wanted to know what was inside this book. And then I looked behind me and there was this giant, like, I don't know what it was, a human or it looked like this giant person that was behind me. And it didn't use words, but I kept asking, like, what was in the book? And it, it like, jumped in the hole and it wasn't going to tell me. And I yelled, like, just fucking tell me. And then somehow this being or whatever it was in my dream, which I, th I think was the angel Gabriel. That's what it told me that it was the angel Gabriel somehow without using words. I don't know how to describe it, but I, in this dream, I knew that it was the angel Gabriel and the angel Gabriel told me that it was the number six and the number four. So I started paying attention to the dates, April 6th and also the dates, June 4th, right? Four, six and six, four. 
or depending on what country you live in, you know, it's opposites as well. So six and four. And then on April 6th that year, I ended up having a dream, which, and I don't dream that often. I like, it's, you know, I didn't up until this point really. And I still don't really have that many dreams, but on April 6th that year, 4-6 or 6-4, I had a dream that I was decoding the news and these news stories and everything kept leading back to the Mandela effect and the rapper Nelly. And it's interesting because I, I looked up Nelly and there was a lot of stuff that had to do with horses with Nelly, such as he had just released that song like High Horse, like get up off that high horse. And uh, he also has a song called, song or album called 5.0 which reminded me of earthquakes, but it actually is in reference to his Mustang, the car. So, you know, there's something, and if you followed me for years, there's a big thing with the Mandela effect and how it's always related to the horse races, the Kentucky Derby and so on. And it stems back to when Omaha beach was in the, was going to be in the Kentucky Derby, but got scratched, but it's it's owner or trainer or whatever it was, was named Richard Mandela whole bunch of stuff with this, but Nelly is Nelly also has a song called just a dream, right? Just, just a dream. So I was like, huh, that is crazy that I would have a dream about Nelly, not even thinking about it. Like why the rapper Nelly? And I didn't know what to think, but then on the date, June 4th, that year, six slash four, we had the death of one of the girls that was in Nelly's let me find it here. It was on June 4th this year, but this girl right here, Pasha Bleasdale, or however you say her name, she ended up dying on June 4th that year, and she is one of the models that is in Nelly's Hot in Here video. So what are the odds that a girl connected to Nelly would end up dying on June 4th, 6 slash 4, when I'm following the numbers 6 and 4, and I have a dream on 4 and 6 about the rapper Nelly, and you know, even further, notice what I blogged about in this blog post. I also talked about Toby Keith and the dream theme, right? So Toby Keith and the dream theme. I Like I said, I had like four blog posts about Toby Keith before Toby Keith died. And they all had to do with this theme with dreams that stemmed back to nine days. And then I have a dream and nine days later, I win $10,000. And then a little bit later, you know, I kept a... I figured out some stuff with how Nelly is connected to this train train wreck theme that I've had, right? There's a big old theme with train wrecks. And I, I even predicted that there would be a train wreck or I knew there was something important to train wrecks back in September of 2021 because I was talking about this theme with dreams. And it was like right after I released my, my book, we had, it was like the Field of Dreams game, the first ever Field of Dreams game was played. Then we had Don Everly of the Everly Brothers Die. They have that song where they go, dreams. And oddly enough, the same day that uh, I had that dream about Nelly in 2022 on April 6th, for whatever reason, I went to the casino that day. And if you were going to my blog post, and I was talking about how when I was taking a piss in the bathroom, the radio was playing that song, Dreams by the Error. All I have to do is dream by the Everly brothers. And uh, anyway, there was also some stuff with Kanye West going on around that same time. I think he released Donda, that new album. And Kanye West, if you go back to 2015, he was connected to this theme with dreams I had with Taylor Swift and Kanye West and Slipknot. Slipknot is the band that has the nine members, which I'm going to sk skip over this, but just making a point that there was something going on with dreams back then and that's when i discovered that the angel gabriel actually is important to messages within dreams and i remember that i had this dream in high school the only time i've ever had a dream like this and uh but i had a dream that my friend crystal's dad died in a car wreck and the very next day my friend crystal's dad did die in a car wreck right he di he died of this I don't even know. I just never forget it. I had this dream. My friend Crystal's dad died in a car wreck. And the very next day they were going to like council bus or something. And he, he died. Everybody else lived in this car wreck and the spot that they wrecked. Just so if you look at the train, it was right before 
is on Highway 191, but just like another mile, that same highway, it doesn't change, but for some reason the highway changes into Railroad Highway, right? And something I've always noticed about that spot that he died, even before he died, was that if you look out at the railroad tracks, there's like a fence out there, and it looks like the Nine Inch Nails logo. It looks like this right here. Like N I and then a backwards or re reversed N. And I've always thought that looked like the nine inch nails thing. So, you know, how interesting he dies just before the highway randomly changes its name to railroad highway. And then you look out at the railroad right by where he died and there's a fence that looks like the nine inch nails thing. And even more interesting is that the next town, like after he died, the next town is Minden, Iowa. And see if I can pull it up here when we find my Nelly post here. And I even blogged about all this and how it was connected to Minden. And there was something to do with this train wreck theme. And then like, just, I don't know, the next day, I think it was, there was a train wreck in, it just so happened to be in Minden, Missouri. Let me see here. The train wreck was, see, he wrecked like right here. And then there's Minden, Iowa. And then this Amtrak derailment that happened the day after I blog about it was in Minden, Missouri. But the reason that the numbers six and four are important is because that guy who died that I had a dream about, his birthday was June 4th, six slash four. And oddly enough, his wife just so happens to be psychic. I never knew this before. So what are the odds that back in high school, I would have a dream about a psychic lady's husband dying and then he dies the very next day. And his birthday is 6-4, this number connected to the angel Gabriel and dreams and showing me the number 6 and 4. And on that same year, 2022, on 6-4, that lady, this guy's son came into the store that I work at and he ordered a pizza. And he called whatever and came and picked it up. And I about crap my pants because I haven't seen this kid since I graduated high school probably. So what are the odds that... He would, you know, be ordering a pizza and I'd see him for the first time in 15, 20 years. It was just mind blowing. And you know, what else is related to this is the fact that I was blogging about this train wreck symbolism again in February, right after winning all that money and so on. I talked about the, my dream and the train theme and how it's linked up to the movie train wreck. I was talking about Nelly and the train stuff, right? I'm trying to think here. I know there was a few more down here. 2022 dream theme, Nelly trains, right? Talking about the train stuff, train wreck. Then we get a story about how Amy Schumer has some something wrong with her. She's like sharing her health update, right? Amy Schumer, who is the star of the movie Train Wreck. And then on March 10th, whatever, March 10th, the big thing was everyone talking about this shaming ritual or whatever humiliation ritual of John Cena but John Cena is also in the movie Trainwreck remember and he's just as naked in the movie Trainwreck with Amy Schumer and this just ha so happened to happen on March 10th 310 and th th there's some other things I also blogged about John Cena in February because John Cena is connected to Caitlin Clark of the Iowa Hawkeyes becoming the the all-time leading scorer and all that. You remember last year she was doing the can't you can't see me thing, and then you had the the Angel Reese girl doing the same thing or whatever. It was all connected back to John Cena. So then John Cena's in the news again. Right after I'm talking about this train wreck theme, and John Cena was Amy Schumer's boyfriend at the beginning of the movie of Train Wreck. But and let, let me explain something too. That the movie Train Wreck was all about the number nine and the number twenty-three as well. If you go back to 2015, when that movie came out, there was a Philadelphia train wreck that happened at 9.23 p.m. And it was synced up to Pope Francis's visit. Remember, pontiff means bridge builder. But Pope Francis arrived in America that year on his 923rd day as Pope. And then he went to the White House at 9.23 in the morning on 9.23. There was all kinds of 9.23 stuff, but... If you watch the movie Trainwreck that happened, that came out just after that Philadelphia train wreck that year, that movie opens up with a scene with Amy Schumer's character when she's nine years old, and the rest of the movie, t movie takes place 23 years later, nine and 23. Remember, the ninth prime number is 23. 
If you write out John Cena's full name, John Felix Anthony Cena, in the satanic cipher, his name equals 923. LeBron James, who was also a star in that movie Trainwreck, his name just so happens to equal 923. And then remember how San Francisco is named after St. Francis of Assisi, just like how Pope Francis is named after that guy. And LeBron James lost to the Golden State Warriors, who play in the San Francisco Bay in 2015. And then later that year, we had the New York Mets lose to the Kansas City Royals in the World Series. And the, there was the power outage, I think, in Game 1, where the power went out at 9.23 p.m. or something. Or the power either came back on or it went out at 9.23 in Game 1, I believe it was, of that World Series. But in the movie Trainwreck, the big running joke is that they're, they hate the New York Yankees and they're Mets fans. Then the Mets go on to be in the World Series that year. And on June 6th of 2015, there was a guy who dressed up like Pope Francis at a Kansas City Royals game, and he caught a home run ball of Salvador Perez, who ended up being the MVP of the World Series that year. So there was something related to how Pope Francis is related to that theme with bridges and train wrecks. But the reason this is so interesting that this happened on the date March 10th, this supposed humiliation ritual, is that if you go back to 2022, when I had that dream with the angel Gabriel showing me the number six and four, I also blogged about the theme with nine days and how it was synced up to train symbolism and how there was a train wreck that happened on March 10th that year that was just 20 minutes away from where I live. But basically what had happened, 2022 was a crazy year with a lot of this synchronicity stuff that I was talking about and how it, it all went back to money as well. Cause I had a canceled ski trip that year because I found out how much it was going to cost. I don't ever remember it skiing being that much money, but I ended up going to Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And it, it went back to this thing with the Eagles winning the Super Bowl and how it was connected to my grandma dying, my uncle dying and my sister. And the town that my sister lives in was their, their town, Audubon, Iowa was featured in a Super Bowl commercial that year. And then a girl from their town ended up drowning in this place called something, something in Sioux Falls. And the last person to drown there was named Lyle Eagle tail. And, uh, the town that my sister lives in was named after John James Audubon, who was famous for writing the book, the Eagle, the birds of America, which is, you know, the bird of America is the Eagle, all kinds of stuff with the, the Eagle symbolism that went back to being at my grandma's house on Eagle street and finding out my sister owned a company called Eagle acres that day. And my uncle Clancy who died connected to the, that Super Bowl. His son was the only Eagles fan that I knew. And then the Eagles went on to win the Super Bowl all connected to that. But I had this canceled ski trip. I ended up going to Sioux falls and I realized that that was where this girl who from my sister's town had died. And I drove by it. And I was like, Holy crap. Cause for months I had been blogging about the date two nineteen and this, water and money theme. And I end up driving by this place and whatever, but I canceled my ski trip and I had this synchronicity with my sister and she wrote the word absolutely to me. And then right as she wrote that, I got a notification on my phone that said, absolutely. Let's see if I can pull it up here, but it was in January, January of I have so many blog posts. It's this one right here, but I had, had these synchronicities. It was absolutely in my canceled ski trip and my sister. And it was linked up to bridge collapses and so on. And then nine days later, we had a bridge collapse in Pittsburgh, right? So there was a bridge collapse on 128. My sister's name equals 128. If you write out bridge collapse, it equals 128. And whatever, there was a bunch of stuff with absolutely, and it made me think of this band called Nine Days, that they have a song called, their, their most famous song is called Absolutely, Story of a Girl, right? And whatever, Nine Days, right? And I was supposed to go skiing, I ended up going to Sioux Falls, South Dakota, but I'm bringing this up because at the Super Bowl this year, just this band just so happened to be featured at the Super Bowl as well. The band Nine Days, they were on a Super Bowl commercial, something about Travel South Dakota. Yeah, so I went to the I went to my dad's house to watch the Super Bowl. And uh 
right before the Super Bowl began, there was a, a commercial that said, the dream something, the, the dream begins at halftime. And I was like, what are the odds there's a commercial that's talking about the dreams? And I'm talking about this dream with the number nine and the Niners being in the Super Bowl. But then later there was a commercial about the band Nine Days. It was this band Nine Days, and they were doing a commercial for Travel South Dakota. And I thought, how odd is that? That They're not even from South Dakota. They're from like New York, and they're doing a Travel South Dakota commercial. And remember, in 2022, I had that synchronicity with my sister and the band Nine Days connected to a bridge collapses. And, you know, it had to do with South Dakota. I ended up going to Sioux Falls instead of going to Colorado and going skiing and so on. So it's pretty weird. And I even look and see, I even talked about the date 310. But uh, I'm bringing that up once again, just because of this John Cena post. So John Cena was just in the news on 310 for being naked at the Oscars. But if you go back to 2022, the same year that I had that synchronicity with the band Nine Days, I also talked about how Sean Penn was in the news. And when I was looking up Sean Penn, it had to do with Russia and Ukraine, and Sean Penn was fleeing to Poland or whatever because he was in Ukraine. But I was looking at my old stuff with Sean Penn, and I noticed I had a, I talked about the bridge symbolism, right? And we just had that bridge collapse in Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh, right? And then think about William Penn and Sean Penn and Pennsylvania and Sean Penn's 128, like William Penn and bridge collapse and all of this stuff. But when I was watching the videos about Sean Penn, my old video, I talked about the nine days stuff and the dream about my dad dying. So I thought that was interesting and... Right? There's a theme with nine days, and possibly something important will happen in nine days, right? And then a few days later, we had a story about the engineer of the Philadelphia train wreck that happened in 2015 and how he was cleared from all of his charges. And I was like, so, you know, in 2022, they cleared this guy of all of his charges? Pretty random time to be doing this, right? So I knew there was something important to this train symbolism, and... Then I kept having a bunch of synchronicity with the band Bon Jovi. And uh can't remember all of it, but I was like, I woke up one morning and I saw a video where this guy was playing a Bon Jovi song. Then I got in my car and a Bon Jovi song was playing. And then uh I went to work and I had to leave and go pick up my son at preschool and then go back to work. And when I got there, my Aunt Rosa was standing there and she's like, did you hear about that Bon Jovi contest? And I was like, what the hell? Bon Jovi just keeps coming up. But what was interesting is my Aunt Rosa, her husband, my Uncle Mike, his birthday is 6-4, right? The dream theme number with Gabriel and so on. But my Uncle Mike just so happened to die on May 12th of 2015, the same day as that Philadelphia train wreck. So I have the synchronicity pointing me to that Philadelphia train wreck. I knew there was something important to train wrecks. And then I was like thinking about the nine days symbolism and... Then we got a Missouri police officers being shot on the 9th of March that year. So eight days later, and it was in Joplin, Missouri, right? And if you go back to 2021, I was talking about this train theme. Now I think there's going to be a train wreck. And then we got a train wreck in Joplin, Montana the very next day. But anyway, in relation to March 10th, the day with John Cena, I went to work that day and once again, I had synchronicity with Bon Jovi and then I got to work and the song absolutely story of a girl was playing on the radio. Right. And I was like, you can't even make this stuff up. The song absolutely is playing now. Nine days later, the song never plays at work ever. So I get in the car, Bon Jovi's on then I go to work absolutely by the band nine days is playing. Then later in the day, there just so happened to be a major train wreck that happened just 20 minutes away from where I live, like right? And the train had a big tiger thing on it. And if you go back to the day I released my book, where I started talking about that dream theme symbolism, that's I was talking about how I looked over and I saw all these cars waiting and they weren't driving down the highway, but they were waiting for a train. And there was a big thing that said tiger on the train. And I was talking about 2022 and the tiger year that year. So I guess the moral of the story is that this this John Cena thing, to me, it has a lot to do with 
this narrative that I'm following with train wreck symbolism and how it's linked to this dream theme that I've had. And you know what else is interesting about the date 310 in relation to the dream I had about my dad dying? If you go back to 2018 and look at all the stuff I was talking about, I deduced, or I thought at least, that 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 dream had to do with, it was, there's a lot of stuff going on with father symbolism around that time. And I thought maybe it was connected to my dad's father, who was my grandpa. And I thought my grandpa might die when my dad is 63 years old. My grandpa ended up dying a month shy of my dad's 63rd birthday, and he died on the date 310. So there is something important to the date 310. I've talked about this date a whole lot of times too. Like that date was really important to a bunch of stuff I was following with Buffy the Vampire Slayer a few years before this and all kinds of stuff. So the Ethiopian airline crash and lion symbolism. But the date 310, earlier in the video I talked about Apollo Creed dying connected to the number 99 and how it's related to that movie called The Nines because that movie came out on August 31st, the day that Apollo Creed died in history. But... Michael Jordan actually retired from baseball on the date 310, which is also the current basketball player, Zach Levine, who plays for the Bulls, who's injured right now, but his birthday is 310. Michael Jordan actually retired from baseball on his exact birthday, 310-1995. But Michael Jordan was really synced up to the 49ers being in the Super Bowl this year. And in 1995, his first game back actually was on 319, so... He retired from baseball and then came back to the NBA nine days after retiring from baseball. Michael Jordan, also really important to this dream theme, right? Because when Michael Jordan played for the Olympics on the Olympic dream team, he wore the number nine and he's mostly known for wearing the number 23, which is the ninth prime number. And recall when he came back out of retirement uh, the first time, he played for 22 games wearing the number 45 which four plus five is also nine, but on the 23rd game back, he switched back to number 23. And then Michael Jordan's father, remember Michael Jordan's father died nine days after Michael Jordan's father, after his own birthday. So, or they found him dead nine days after his birthday. And his birthday was on the 23rd of July, which is the heliacal rising of Sirius, which is the dog star and so on. But the entrance music for Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls was the song called Sirius by the Alan Parsons Project. So his father was born on the same day as the heliacal rising of Sirius. And then he dies nine days after his birthday. You know, Michael Jordan comes back out of retirement nine days after retiring from baseball. He used to wear the number nine, famous for wearing the number 23. And if you look at the, the stuff with the San Francisco 49ers this year and Michael Jordan, there's all kinds of stuff with you know, Michael Jordan and how it relates to the 49ers. But before I even get into that, but when Michael Jordan was retired from basketball, the two years that he was gone, the team that won was the Houston Rockets. And the Houston Rockets star player was Hakeem Olajuwon. And Hakeem Olajuwon, his nickname just so happens to be The Dream, right? So the two years Michael Jordan wasn't playing basketball, the first time he retired, the team that won, their star player was nicknamed The Dream. And I can't remember how, but there's there's some way. There was like a, he's from Nigeria, I believe. Let me see here. Pretty sure he's from, yeah, he's from Nigeria. And there was that Nigerian building collapse that was linked up to there somehow. I can't even remember it all. I'll have to go back and relook at it. But I know I have a blog post where I'm talking about my the dream with my father and Hakeem Olajuwon and Nigeria. So, you know, this is interesting. His nickname is The Dream. He wins the finals the two times Michael Jordan doesn't. Michael Jordan wore number nine for the Dream Team. Let's see if I can find the post here. But let's look at Michael Jordan and how he was connected to the Super Bowl. So, the last time that the 49ers actually won a Super Bowl was in 19... What was it? 1995, right? It was in 1995. It was their 49th season as a franchise. And they they won with 49 points. 
And the lead rusher of the game was the quarterback, Steve Young, who had 49 rushing yards, which is odd. The quarterback to have the lead rush, you know, but he was, you know, the quarterback has 49 rushing yards. They win in their 49th season. They're called the 49ers. They score 49 points, but they just so happened to win that exactly 49 days before Michael Jordan came out of retirement and started playing basketball again. And if you write out Chicago Bulls, it equals 49. If you write out Sirius, it equals 49. If you write out Space Jam, it equals 49. And the next time that the 49ers had won a Super Bowl was, uh, or were in the Super Bowl, so they won in 1995, connected to Michael Jordan and the, and the number 49. The next time that they were in the Super Bowl was 2012, which just so happened to be when Michael Jordan was 49 years old, right? So that, what are the odds of that, you know? Michael Jordan comes out of retirement 49 days after the 49ers win the Super Bowl, scoring 49 points with the lead rusher, Steve Young, the quarterback, having 49 yards. Then the next time the 49ers make the Super Bowl was when Michael Jordan was 49 years old. And we had, just before the Super Bowl this year, we had the Tower 22 drone attack that was in the country Jordan. And for years, I've talked about Michael Jordan being synced up to this theme with love and Philadelphia and Philadelphia being the city of brotherly love. Later, I'll talk about Jordan love of the Green Bay Packers and how that was linked up to me winning money on Chumba as well. And uh, it also goes back to Toby Keith and the song, I Should Have Been a Cowboy. But there was the Tower 22 drone attack in Jordan this year. And on that same day, the Bulls got their 22nd win of the season, right? So think about Michael Jordan, Tower 22, the Bulls got their 22nd win of the season. Drone attack also equals 49. The word basketball equals 22, right? So there, there's something important to how that all links together. And for years, what I've talked about with Michael Jordan is the fact his first retirement was on the date 10 slash 6. And... This is also a date that I've talked about with the train symbolism because that Philadelphia train wreck had the number 601 written on it and a whole bunch of other stuff. So it just makes me wonder. I'm going to pay attention to the date 10 6 this year, which is interesting with my book because, you know, Oct October is actually was the eighth month originally. So 8 6, right? There's a whole bunch of stuff. I, it's too much to explain, but. That's what I think I'm supposed to pay attention to with all this Michael Jordan stuff is the date 10, 6 this year, maybe six ten even maybe June 10th. And I'm definitely going to pay attention to April 6th and June 4th again, since I've had the synchronicity with these numbers and the dream theme. But anyway, in relation to Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan also just completed his sale of the Charlotte Hornets in 2023. And he did it on Tom Brady's birthday. Well, the college team that plays in Charlotte just so happens to be the Charlotte 49ers, you know, and Tom Brady, he remember he won Super Bowl 49 or in 2014. There was a story in like June, a story about how Tom Brady and Giselle Bunchin were selling their house and they called it the Brady Bunchin house. And Dr. Dre was going to buy the house. Well, Dr. Dre equals 49 in Gematria. He was 49 years old and he was born on the 49th day of the year. And then Tom Brady went on to win Super Bowl 49 later that year. And right around the same time, we had the story about Dr. Dre trying to buy the Brady Bunchton house. Alice from the Brady Bunch died. The lady who played Alice. Can't think of what her name is. Something with the letter B in it. But whatever that lady's name is, she died. And it was like either a couple days before or a couple days after the story about Dr. Dre wanting to buy the Brady Bunch chin house, right? The Brady Bunch. And then Tom Brady goes on to win Super Bowl 49 when Dr. Dre is 49 years old and born on the 49th day of the year. And his name equals 49. But, you know, just it's just really interesting. There's something going on with Michael Jordan, how he's connected to that. And then think about Michael B. Jordan and how he plays Apollo Creed's son. And, and you know, I had other synchronicity. I actually know a guy who actually was friends with Carl Weathers, the guy who plays Apollo Creed. And Carl Weathers died super in connection to this guy and a connection with the the band, the Eagles, that I probably won't talk about this, but 
You know, he died 52 days after I had synchronicity with this guy in Eagles. And then I found out that guy was friends with Carl Weathers because Carl Weathers was a big cattle guy and owned like a ranch and whatever. And this, this other guy, he worked for a, a big cattle company and they used to meet each other, have business meetings, go out to dinner and stuff. So he knew Carl Weathers even. And he died 52 days later in Apollo Creed. Carl Weathers died like five months and two days after Apollo Creed's death date. And I think Apollo Creed equals 52. There's all kinds of stuff with it. But in relation to earthquakes too, the Michael Jordan thing, the, the, the capital of country Jordan used to be called Philadelphia. This was old research. It's probably changed now on Wikipedia. But back in 2015, it said that the capital of the country Jordan was called Philadelphia until the year 106 AD. And then it was destroyed by earthquakes, right? So, and there, there's this big narrative I followed with Hulk Hogan and how it links up to San Francisco and the third temple and the, the, the cube and so on on top of the Comcast center in the movie happy Gilmore, where he learns how to put on the earthquake golf course at one hour and seven minutes into the movie, like how earthquake equals 107. But the building that falls over looks like the Comcast center in Philadelphia. It has the, the cube on the top of it. And this, that all goes back to the, the third temple. And if you were in the Gematria community in 2019, a big thing everyone was talking about was the day August 11th and how it was linked up to the third temple, which is also Hulk Hogan's birthday. And Hulk Hogan once got his revenge against earthquake at the Spectrum in Philadelphia. And Michael Jordan used to own the Charlotte Hornets to play in the Spectrum Center. And we just had the Iron Sheik die on June 7th, which is the same day that Earthquake, the wrestler, died in history. And remember last year we had the Earthquake in the biblical Philadelphia area, right? And that was when the Eagles were in the Super Bowl against the Chiefs and so on. It was in Turkey the biblical Philadelphia. And that's interesting because all the stuff that I've talked about with Rocky and Apollo Creed, I talked about World War III and possibly being something very important to Thanksgiving and Turkey. So, no, it's a lot to explain. Like I said, these the videos have to be really long. There's so much to go back and re-explain, but Michael Jordan is somehow related to all that. You know, what's even funnier is I just looked up Michael B. Jordan and look at his birthday, February 9th, right? That's the same day that I had the, the synchronicity with the movie, the nines, right? So maybe there is something really important to the date, August 31st as well. In 318, you know, it's could be written as 31 slash eight. That is the number we've associated with. We've called it the God number for years. And uh, because of the movie, the TV show called Touch. You know, just think about the angel Gabriel, the God number. And another interesting thing about this, the number 318 is the fact that for years we've talked about how there's a connection to like pi, right? With 22 divided by seven, right? So the date... July 22nd is often, you know, we talk about it, this connection to pi because 22 divided by 7 is 3.14. And if you write out as words, 22 divided by 7, I think it equals 314. But if you do it the opposite way, 7 divided by 22, remember it's 0. 0.318, right? So it has this, I don't know, adverse connection, right? And this is interesting because, again, I have just won... I just won $10,000 again this year on Pi Day of all days, right? And, you know, it's just crazy. On Pi Day, I would win again. And what's interesting is that Zenith had just recently made this video where he was showing to me. I haven't got back to him yet, but I will. But he just made this video for me, wherever it is, where he won a jackpot at the casino on the date July 22nd, 722, connected to Pi, you know. 
so you can you can go watch this video. It's you know it's basically just his winning, but he was talking about I don't know what year it was. I wonder if it was the year twenty two or not. I'll have to go back and look. But he won on twenty two dash seven connected to. Oh, I'm probably gonna end the video soon, but it's just so hard to organize. But I want to go back and explain some of these things with uh, a, a different narrative. But it's kind of the same thing with with the dream theme. But back in October, I made a blog post where I was talking about. I noticed that the Green Bay Packers, the guy who designed the logo for the Green Bay Packers, died, and the logo is the big G, right? So it's the letter G, which is G is the seventh letter. And that game that week just so happened to be the. Green Bay Packers versus the Las Vegas Raiders. And what was interesting is that the Las Vegas Raiders quarterback is nickname is Jimmy G, right? So the letter G. And the Green Bay Packers quarterback was Jordan Love. And for years I've talked about this narrative with Michael Jordan and Love. I'm pretty sure I even mentioned that in here somewhere. Possibly not. I know I, I mentioned it somewhere, but moral of the story, the, the guy who made the G logo for the Packers dies. Then the Packers go on to play Jimmy G. And what I noticed was that his birthday was November 2nd. And Jordan Love, the quarterback of the Green Bay Packers, was also born on November 2nd. And their birthdays were seven days apart, right? Remember, G is the seventh letter. Then we had this guy who made the G logo die. So I knew there was something important to the letter G. I also put in how the letter G equals 33 in the capital letter ciphers that we used to call Francis Bacon, which I still do. But if you write out Jimmy G, it equals 77. If you write out Jimmy Garoppolo, it equals 77. If you write out Green Bay, it equals 77. And then I wrote, think about the number seven in relation to slot machines, craps, Las Vegas. And the guy who made the G logo, he also died 33 days before these two guys' birthdays. So I knew there was something important to 7 and 33. And let me see here. Got to go back to October. So later that day, I was, you know, I saw the, the, the casino connection, the number 7, and I thought, huh, interesting. And I went on Chumba. And I just so happened to win almost $3,000 on Chumba that day because I played this game called Mega 7. It was Mega 7. And I only played it because I thought maybe there was something important to the number 7. And it turned out it just so happened to be th 33 days before my birthday, which, you know, and Chumba, the place I play, equals 33. And if you read out Chumba Casino, it equals 109. The date was 10 slash 9. So, you know what I mean? It was all about... It was just weird. It was all connected to the letter G and the date November 2nd. Just trying to read through here. Yeah, there. I talked about Michael Jordan, right? Michael Jordan and this love theme and the Philadelphia earthquake symbolism, the same symbolism that I'm talking about. It's somehow related to all of what is going on. I don't know if there's going to be an East Coast earthquake or, you know, it had a lot to do with the Ben Franklin Bridge with that Bridgewater shooting. Because the news story had it showed Franklin Bridge, if you looked at it, when they changed the guy to a black guy instead of a white guy from the original video. But, you know, what are the odds that I would win that day? Playing a game about the number 7, 33 days before my birthday, the letter G equals 7 and 33. And then, you know, a few days after this, we had like the death of Suzanne Summers and... I pointed out how there was a bunch of stuff with Dallas, and I, I was watching for the date November 2nd, which was Jordan Love and Jimmy G's birthdays. There was just something important to Dallas, and, you know, nothing really that big happened with Dallas on November 2nd. Well, except for the fact that the power went out. I went to the casino that night because I thought maybe I'd win money, and the power went out at 11-11. And there was probably like 15 people in the casino that night. Like, there's a small casino. There's probably like 15 people there. The power went out. 
every single person that was there was in a bonus game when the power went out. Everybody. Everyone was like, I was in a bonus game. I heard some guy like, I was in a bonus game. And then everyone was all worried. So then the power, I was even in a bonus game. And then the power went out at 11-11. That's the craziest thing in the world. Like, But uh, they finally got it going. Then I, whatever, the bonus game was at Sando. I didn't win anything on my bonus game. And then one of the workers even joked how, oh, they probably did that on purpose to make you guys lose. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's probably right. But anyway, a few days after this, I talked about 11-11 in this post, but I think it was November 7th. I had a dream about this guy who used to own the bar named Billy G. And I thought that was interesting with that G symbolism, right? And I had a dream that I was DJing like a wedding and he kept asking me to play a song called Coco. And then every time I tried to get up there, something would happen. Someone would start talking to me, blah, blah, blah. For some reason, I couldn't play his song in this dream. It just, my dream would not let me play his song Coco. And I still don't know what the song Coco is. Maybe it's something to do with that movie Coco. You know, I, I really have no idea even how to spell it. But all I know is Billy G in this dream was asking me to play the song Coco. And I had that on November 7th of 2023. And, you know, I didn't know the reason, but that's why I blog about it. I just blogged about it. And Billy G is the biggest Dallas Cowboys fan that I've ever met. Big Dallas Cowboys fan. And later in January, I noticed that the Packers were going to be playing the Cowboys to open up the NFL playoffs, right? I was like, the Packers are going to be playing the Cowboys. And I was watching this theme with Dallas on the date, November 2nd, and it was connected to the Packers. And so I bet on the Packers, but I did it on the same game parlay and ended up losing. But uh, just pointing out here, I noticed that the Packers were the, the number seven seed as well. So the Packers were the number seven seed Think about the letter G equaling seven and all the Jimmy G stuff and slot machines and the number seven and how I won. And I mentioned how I won money on the one called mega seven. So that day I figured, huh, maybe I should play the, uh, maybe I should go back and play that number seven slot machine. Right. And I went and played that number seven slot machine and I ended up winning $1,300. But something I thought that was really interesting was, so the first time that that happened, when Jimmy G played Jordan Love and whatever, and I won the almost $3,000, that was on October 9th. And Billy G's brother, Fat Cat, or Jeff Greenwood, he ended up dying on October 9th. So that same day that I won on the Mega 7 for the first time, Billy G's brother died on that day. You know, it's craziness. And you know, I don't know. He's even born on the 7th of December, Pearl Harbor Day. And he was a big Eagles fan. It's just interesting that his brother would die on that day. And, you know, I'm connecting. I later start thinking there's something important to Dallas. Synced up to November 2nd because of that G stuff. The biggest Dallas Cowboys fan that I know is Billy G. Then I end up having a dream about Billy G. And then the same day the Packers play the Cowboys in the playoffs, you know, it's just craziness. And the number seven seed, and then I win again on that mega seven thing. But a couple days before this, I DJed for a, I don't remember what it was, some type of birthday party. I think a 30th birthday party and everyone wore denim. But that was the same day that the Chiefs and the Dolphins played in the playoffs. And everyone at this party was, they're like huge uh, Kansas City Chiefs fans and then I, I barely have any shirts and I often wear like my Miami Dolphins jersey so I wore my, wore my Miami Dolphins jersey kind of as a joke saying like well I'm the DJ and if the you know if the Chiefs lose that I can play whatever I want all night blah 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 but Billy G was there and Billy G being the huge Cowboys fan after the Dolphins lost I played the song I should have been a cowboy by Toby Keith for Billy G you know just to make all the Chiefs fans be like, what the hell, you know? And me and Billy G had a little bit of a laugh about it because I played the song I should have been a cowboy after the Chiefs had beat the Miami Dolphins. But that is a Toby Keith song, you know? So Toby Keith synced up to this dream theme and then the odds that I would play the song I should have been a cowboy for Billy G are just, you know, they're kind of mind-blowing. And the reason it's so mind-blowing is that the fact that if you go back to 
Sam talked about Billy G in this post about uh, Toby Keith, right? The dream was on 11-7. Toby Keith died on the 36th day of the year. Bridge equals 36 and 117. That dream was 58 days or one month and 28 days after Billy's birthday. Toby Keith, 128. Bridge collapse, 128. Remember the number 58, Super Bowl 58, Tupac, and so on. But I played the song, I Should Have Been a Cowboy. And notice that old post from where I talked about Toby Keith in the nine days. What I also talked about was synchronicity with the song, I Should Have Been a Cowboy. Right? So there's definitely something linked up to how that all goes together. So I'm probably going to leave it there. Hopefully it makes sense. It's a lot to talk about, a lot to remember, but I'm also watching the date 418. There, there's a big thing with Aleister Crowley, like I said, and my son, and th there's all kinds of stuff with 418. Like Zach just started that new radio show called Wake the Fuck Up that equals 418, and that's he started it four months and 18 days before his birthday on 3-3. Just chalk up another 33 around Zach, but 418 was also this number connected to Taylor Swift, who was important to the dream theme from 2015. And the Super Bowl was four months and 18 days after Zach made the salsa video about me. And it, she released that new album, whatever it was, Midnight something that he, something, whatever it was, it equals 418. Rambo's first ever Gematria Effect episode was on the date 418. There's all kinds of stuff with this number 418. And Zenith is talking about how it's linked up to Prince and Zach's prediction that Prince would die in 2016. And a whole bunch of stuff that I don't want to go into right now. But 418 is also an interesting day because before Pope Benedict died, I think that was 2022, wasn't it? Hold on, let me look at this up real quick. Pope Benedict. When did he die? Yeah, December of 2022. So on April 18th in 2022, the year I was having all that dream stuff with Nelly and the angel Gabriel and so on. On the date 418, my dead Aunt Betty tried to add me on Facebook or she messaged me on Facebook and she won $300,000 or $250,000 on a lottery ticket years ago. Just after her husband, my uncle Barney, went and saw Pope Benedict in Washington, D.C. And then not too long after that, my Aunt Betty won 250000 on a lottery ticket. And on the date 418, she, after she died, she was trying to, uh, she sent me a message on Facebook, which I thought was funny. If you write out Pope Benedict, his name equals 418. And when I went to Facebook that day, one of the first posts that came up was of a, some girl winning on a lottery, a scratch off lottery ticket. Crap. Let's see if I can pull it up here. So yeah, my dead aunt Betty friend requested me on Facebook that day. I talked about Kanye West. I it's linked to the dream theme, but 418 that same day on Facebook, some girl posted a picture of how she won $5,000, I think on a scratch off lottery ticket. And notice it was the number nine ticket even. So I think I'm supposed to buy a lottery ticket on April 18th or there's something important to the date April 18th this year. But part of the reason I think that sticks out is because in this post where Toby Keith died and I talked about Toby Keith and Billy G and so on. The, on the same day that my Aunt Betty died, which was February 5th, a few years back, the... On February 5th this year, our oven broke down. And for some reason, my boss put a note on there that wrote, Old Betty is out of order. And I work with Betty's sister, Patty. And Patty pointed out how it was funny that they, she called it Old Betty the same day that Betty died in history. And I was like, that is pretty weird. I never noticed that before, you know. And then a girl that I work with was wearing this shirt that has the number nine on it that day. So there's definitely something going on with gambling and money. How it's linked up to the number nine, linked up to this. All the there's just so many different themes all coming together, but it, you just can't even make some of the stuff up. There was also a 
just want to quickly share, but one night I was, I had a band gig at the bar and this guy came up and started hugging me and talking to me. And he told me that I need to get this citrine stone. And I looked up the citrine stone and it just so happens to be called the money stone. And it's supposed to bring you lots of money, but his name was Gabriel. And I'm going to end the video here because I only have two more seconds.